Hello my friends and welcome back to our channel Home is Where Our Heart Is. My name is Dane, author of the book Knowledge to Forage, Wild Edible and Medicinal Plants and Trees. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world today and thank you all for joining me on this absolutely fresh autumnal morning. Autumn is an incredible time of year. It's the season where the trees teach us it can be beautiful to let things go and every single leaf gets its chance to become a floating flower. Autumn also brings with it them first frosts. This frost transforms the once hard rosips into soft squishy fruits filled with a soft squishy juice that's rich in vitamin C and this frost turns the slow berries from hard sour berries into much more softer edible fruits. So if you're interested, then come with me and we'll dive into the world of the slow berry. So firstly, what exactly is a slow berry? A slow berry is the fruit of the blackthorn tree. And the blackthorn tree is native to Europe and Asia, but it can be found naturalized as far away as New Zealand and North America. This tree grows in abundance in these places and is often used for hedging because it's so thorny and it grows so dense and thick, it can make a fantastic natural barrier. Now, during the winter, this tree has no leaves and it looks like a dark thorny skeleton barren of life, you'd be forgiven of thinking that that tree is even dead. But as soon as that early spring comes, the blackthorn tree is one of the first trees to blossom and it becomes absolutely covered in these beautiful creamy little flowers. I was walking by just here last year and I took some incredible drone footage of this area and you can see that this whole place looks like it's covered in this blossomy snow. Now these flowers, the blossoms of the blackthorn tree, ultimately later in the year transform into the blackthorn's slows, these little berries. Now when they first appear they're far too hard and bitter to eat and you'll usually see them in the summer and then as soon as them first frosts roll in they start softening up. Now, even then, they're still very sour and you taste them a little bit and it instantly dries out your mouth. And they're most famously used to make slow gin because they're so bitter and sour. But slow gin aside, these slow berries also make many other fantastic recipes such as jams or even chocolate liqueurs. All you have to do is cook them and they become much more palatable, much more delicious to eat. Now to identify slows is super super simple. They grow on the blackthorn tree which has dark bark and thorny branches. Its leaves are small and green with toothed edges. They start life off bright green and then turn yellow and fall later in autumn. And the slows themselves are a dark black color with an almost blue hue to them. When you hold them in your hands, you can wipe away this frost of color and this reveals the pure black slow. The slows are a round shape and when you open them up, they have a single seed inside. And you can see the flesh is a kind of yellowy greenish color. Now once you've learned to identify slows, a fun thing to do is when you're out with your friends and family, if they don't understand the powerful sour bitterness of the slows, is to give them one to have a little nibble on and watch their face cringe. <laughs> Now slow berries are not only delicious when cooked in recipes, they're also great for our health and packed full of many vitamins and minerals. Slows are packed full of vitamin A, B, C, E, K, B1, B2, B6, calcium and magnesium. What a beautiful selection of health boosting vitamins all packed within these little berries. 
Now, like the great Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food because this wild and free food that grows abundantly all around us also has powerful medicinal properties too. And these medicinal properties have been harnessed by people for thousands and thousands of years. How do we know this? Well, the oldest mummified person ever found in Europe had slow berries in his medicine bag and his name was Otzi the Iceman. Otzi the Iceman was preserved in ice for a staggering 5,300 years. This makes him older than the Egyptian pyramids and even Stonehenge. Otzi was discovered accidentally by hikers in 1991 together with his clothing and equipment on the Italian and Austrian borders. His organs, as well as the majority of his tissue, fingernails, hair, even a lunch in his belly was frozen. Otzi the Iceman was found with a preserved medical kit that revealed many things about his ancient knowledge on herbal medicine. Otzi's medical kit contained the fungus, birch polypore and slow berries. Tests show that Otzi wasn't very well when he died. He had a parasite called whipworm and was suffering from Lyme disease. Otzi was using the combination of slow berries and birch polypore to help combat both of these ailments. It's amazing how the ancient people understood the medicinal properties found in nature. Now what's incredible about Otzi the Iceman using these slow berries or this birch polypore to help treat his ailments is these fungi and fruits have been proven to have medicinal properties by science today. I found multiple studies on slow berries that show they have many wonderful healing abilities. I found one study that shows that slows are anti-inflammatory and have wound healing abilities. I found another study that shows that slow berries have antimicrobial properties, meaning these fruits offer a natural prevention of several bacteria infections. And there are even multiple studies with positive results showing that slows may possess anti-cancer activity. So the slow berry, the healing berry of our ancestors is now proven to be medicinal today. But we don't always need these scientific studies to back up these healing abilities found in nature. Although they are awesome, people have known that the slow berries are great and healing for thousands of years and they're still used in traditional herbalism today. If you was to visit a traditional herbalist, they'd likely tell you that slows are good for stimulating our body's metabolism, cleansing our blood, being made into cough syrups or being used to soothe our digestive issues. Slows are also traditionally made into drinks for helping not just heal sore throats, but also heal sore mouths and gums and even to help fasten loose teeth in our mouth. Now, this knowledge passed down through the generations, I think it's vital to preserve, should be respected, cherished, and researched further today. This entire meadow is covered in an absolute sea of slows. This incredible healing berry of our ancestors still blesses this earth in abundance today and is another great example of how we're surrounded in not just food for free, but medicine too. And I happen to believe what Rudolf Steiner said all them years ago, for every human illness, somewhere in the world exists a plant which holds the cure. <laughs> Anyways, people, it's been a pleasure. Don't forget to do all them modern world things such as like, comment and subscribe on this channel. Ring the bell. It really helps us to grow and spread our nature-inspired education far and wide across the world. And if you want to own all this knowledge in a book, check out our book, Knowledge to Forage, Wild Edible and Medicinal Plants and Trees. And most importantly, make sure to get out there in the fresh autumn air and enjoy the slow berries. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Peace.
The black fawn stands, a black skeleton in winter, void of life, who would even know these fawny bones live? When the days grow dark, so does its bark, upon its fawny throne sits the wise old skylark. Cold, wet and still, we feel the black fawn winter's chill, until its spring resurrection reveals its warmth and goodwill.